Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and my tutorials. So in this tutorial, we're going to talk about histogram. Histogram is basically like a bar chart which is used to identify the distribution patterns. In layman terms, if I have to explain, histogram is used to create buckets and identify the uh, frequency of that particular uh, column, right? So for example, uh, I ha in this I have a sample uh, sales data set over here and I have a discount column here ranging all the way from uh, sorry ranging from 0 to all the way to 80 percent uh, just give it a second while this loads uh, yeah ranging from 0 to all the way to 80 percent and uh, if we have to identify or create buckets let's say from 0 to 20 percent 20 to 40 percent and see how many quantities we have sold in that particular discounted bucket so this is where uh, histogram comes into the play and helps you identify the distribution or get the frequency of that particular bucket. So let's get started and show you how exactly this needs to be created and how histogram needs to be read. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is go to the discount column here, click on these three ellipses over here and click on new group. So once you do this, a dialog box will pop up over here uh, displaying your minimum value and the max value which is there in that particular column. So like I told you, the minimum value is 0% and the maximum value is 80%. So it is denoted by 0 0.8 and 0. Let's create a bin size. So we will create a bin size of 0 to 20%, 20 to 40% like that. And then we will, if we create a bin size of 20% each, we will have four bins into our uh, visual over here. So let's click on OK now. So we have created four bins now. Let's create a column chart over here. So we're going to use the column chart to display the uh, histogram chart, chart over here and then bring in the bins or discounted bins over here which we've just created into our x-axis. Now let's say we want to identify the number of quantities we sold based on the discount. We're going to bring in the, quant uh, the quantity column into our y-axis. So when you do this, you will now see that uh, 0 to 20 percent we have sold around 25,055 quantities let's quickly turn on the data labels as well so 25,100 over here 0 to 20 percent 20 to 40 percent is 19,400 and as and we can also read over here so as the discount is rising over here the number of quantities sold is reducing for whatever reasons the number of as the discount quantity is increasing these might be the older products which are there on maximum discount hence the quantity is reducing when the discount quant the discount percentage is less the quantity is more over here right so that is exactly what this particular chart is explaining to us. Now, uh, one more thing to keep in mind over here. So when we talk about 0 to 20 percent, right? So this is divided into percentage buckets. So when we say 0 to 20 percent and then next is 20 to 40 percent and then the next one is here 40 to 60 percent. In this, what happens is the lower limit over here is included. However, the external limit which is 20 is excluded. Over here 20 is included and over here 40 is excluded. Likewise same over here 40 is included in the lower limit and in the upper limit it is excluded. So which means that we will not see anything 60 over here however it appears here in the next bar over here right i hope this is clear as to what is included and what is not included when we say because it is a continuous variable so this has to be kept in mind over here okay i'm going to show you another example of how this can be helpful so i have another uh, data set with me over here which i've downloaded from kaggle which is the famous titanic website uh, data set so when I go to this particular data set over here, I have the passenger IDs, I have name, uh, the gender of that particular passenger and then uh, how many of them survive, which is over here. Okay. So using the columns age and survived columns over here, we will identify a pattern and create a buckets, let's say from 0 to 10 years, how many passengers have survived, 10 to 20 years, how many passengers have survived. And if you have to achieve this using the uh, formulas or something, it is quite complicated, but histogram makes it really, really easy for you. So let's go over here and on this age uh, column over here, we will cl click on new group and then it tells you the minimum value is one. So there was a one year old child as well on the Titanic 
and then the maximum or the oldest person in the uh, ship was 76 year old person so let's create a bin size of 10 which means that we are now saying 1 to 10 year old is one bin 10 to 20 year old is one bin 20 to 30 is one bin likewise eight bins will now get created so i'm going to click on ok over here so we've now created a new bin column over here let's add a column chart over here and now bring in the age bins into our x axis and now uh, and then uh, add in the uh, survived column into our y axis so basically the, and let's turn on the data labels to see the numbers so basically what this chart is now telling us is that first thing is that it has now grouped from 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 and like I told you it follows the same uh, way over here so 0 to 9 year old are included in this and then 10 to 19 are included in this and then 20 to 29 year old are included in this particular bar over here so if you see over here there is a this is a right skewed data and then from 0 to uh, 9 year old are 9 members over here or 9 passengers who were who survived and then the maximum number of people who survived on, on the titanic was from were ranging from 20 year old to 29 year old wherein the passengers or the number of passengers were 68 likewise there was one passenger which was 70 year old who was who survived in that particular ship so this is how you can understand the pattern and the frequency of data using the histogram uh, chart and this is an extremely extremely helpful visual which you have to incorporate in your data set especially when you are dealing with frequencies and trying to understand the distribution of the data set right so that's it guys in this particular tutorial i hope you found this video helpful i hope you've learned something new today please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials